Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day two of week five of the Halo Championship Series Pro League. I'm strong side, and with me as always is my good friend and former teammate, Kyle Elamite Elam. Always a pleasure to be here, Mike, and we have a lot in store for today, so let's not waste any time and get right into it. Of course, here in North America, we do have the top eight teams that qualified for the Pro League, and these teams will each play each other twice during the regular season, with the top four teams then advancing to the season finals. Fifth and sixth, of course, will have their spot guaranteed for next season. However, seventh and eighth teams will fall to relegation and then have to play against the open circuit teams. Now, taking a look at the standings, we'll still see Counter Logic Gaming in that number one spot with eight wins and one loss. Team Envious following right behind them, seven to two. Enigma Six now trailing them as well six and three and then eg renegades allegiance all tied for that fourth seed four and five optic gaming and team liquid though they are falling behind more and more each week two and seven and team liquid one and eight and let's take a look at some of tonight's matches and there is a lot on the line of course optic gaming versus renegades this is going to be a must win situation for renegades and then as well as Team Liquid versus Allegiance, another must win for Allegiance being in that tie situation. Team Envious versus Counter Logic Gaming, of course, our match of the week, followed up by one I am extremely excited for. A lot on the line here, Evil Genius is going up against Enigma 6. Yeah, we've got a lot of big matches today, so I'm excited to see these go down, but let's get into the top stories. We've got the EU final standings now after they played this morning. Euphorix is the only undefeated team in both NA and EU. 10 and 0. They did not lose a single match. Infused 6 and 4, X-Men 5 and 5, and then Vibe 4 and 6. These will be your top four teams for the EU Pro League Finals. Vibe had a phenomenal match earlier today to beat X-Men in Game 5 on Regret Team Slayer. We saw a great push from them out of a base, and uh, a few words from Riots if uh, you caught a, a chance to catch an uh, onset on stream there with Rhinoob and Spartan. So, I mean, these teams definitely, I mean, they fought so hard to make it into this final four and uh, I mean it came down to the wire for all these teams and you know I'm really surprised by that because I thought dinosaurs was gonna be somebody we we're seeing over there too so of course they have to be disappointed with that finish now in the North American end of course we do have quite this storyline developing here and that is going to be the battle for that fourth seed going into the finals. There are so many teams so close here with only a percentage separating. If we can take a look back at those standings here again. Yeah, and honestly, I'd still say it's a battle for top four. Like, we do have Evil Geniuses, Renegades, and Allegiance tied for that fourth seed. But if Enigma 6, if they don't keep winning, we could see them fall behind. They have a big matchup today that they need to win. And if they win that, there's still four matches left after today. So still a lot that could potentially happen. When you look on paper, I mean, anything could happen technically. I know. I mean, we saw the top now seeing top three teams kind of pull away with it. The question a few weeks ago was who's the second best team? Now it's just an amazing race for that fourth place spot. And if one of these teams gets upset by either Liquid or Optic, that would almost seal the deal and prevent them from making it to the finals. Definitely. Well, we've got quite the story to kick things off here. I mean, buckle up. We are announcing the location for the North American Halo Championship Series Pro League Summer Finals. It's going to be at the KCON convention at LA Live. This is going to be going down July 31st for the finals. And the day before, on July 30th, we will have the relegation matches as well. This will be the top four teams competing in the finals. It will be a double elimination bracket as well. Tickets will be sold soon, so make sure you book your days off to potentially make it out to this event. And of course, you mentioned that relegation on July 30th. The top pro or the bottom two teams from the Pro League will face off against the top two teams from the Open Circuit Finals. So, and look at look, look at the seatings there. I mean. We've got seats right now. We've got a lot of seats. So if you want to check out the event this time, we've got plenty of seats. So uh, we're going to have a big show. There's going to be a big audience and a very big show as well. Yeah, there's a lot going on there being at KCON and things. So really excited. Always love going over to LA Live. Can't wait for the July 30th, 31st. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. So for more stories, you can visit Halo.gg for all the standing schedules, all the updates and news. Uh, you can check that out. You can go there. We're going to have all the series layouts. We're going to have everything. You can even potentially check out uh, the top five plays of the week. You can check out the HCS Listen In. We got a lot of stuff. And of course, if you want to find more information about the finals here, make sure you head over to ProLeague.com 
forward slash halo for all that news. Exactly. Well, you know, if you want to join in on the conversation, hashtag HCS on Twitter or tweet at us at ESL Halo or at HCS. I mean, we've got a lot of big matches to close out the rest of the season here. So it comes down to the final few weeks here and seeing what teams can secure their spot in the top four. And of course, Strongside and I always check out all the Twitter action and things going on after the show as well. So if you want to talk to us, absolutely tweet out using the uh, hashtag HCS. And we've also got the Jinx Rap. So if you want to try and win some cool gear, if you want to win a lanyard, a, a jacket, or a t-shirt, check out the website there on your screen and sign up and uh, potentially win some free stuff. Big shout out to Jinx for uh, lending us a hand here and giving us some free apparel to give out. Yeah, we said it before. These are some pretty cool t-shirts as well. And if anyone's listening, I don't have one myself. So hopefully you know, we can get that worked out here pretty soon. Yeah, but man, I'm <laughs> excited. We've got finals announced. At Everyone's been waiting for this announcement, so I'm excited that we've got it out there now. Everyone can uh, can prep up and uh, get ready for this epic NA Finals. I mean, even the EU Finals, it's going to be epic as well. But let's uh, get ready to get into this first match here. Yeah, I mean, before we can get the Finals, we need to know who's going to make it. And part of that is going to be determined right here in all of the matches today. We have Optic Gaming going up against Team Renegades. So we've seen Optic Gaming struggling a little bit here over the season. And then Renegades are off to a really strong start, but they've really fallen behind now of what we've seen. Let's take a look at some of the players here from Optic Gaming. We do have Straight Sick, Maniac, Ace, and APG. Uh, of course, you can see in some of the stats here, Ace is back on the team. He did leap briefly there. Uh, we've seen some great things out of him over the course of the season, dropping some big numbers. So really looking forward to seeing the rest of the team step this up. You know, they're being in seventh uh, place right now, but still time to turn it around. And they, you said any, they win one of these games, they are going to upset someone pretty badly. Definitely. Well, let's look at the other squad here. We've got Renegades, commonly Ninja, Victory X, and Penguin. And, you know, these guys are actually coming off uh, a loss. And not only a loss, they haven't won their last three matches in the Pro League. So they, they're desperate to get a win right now. I mean, these guys have definitely struggled the, the past few matches in uh, the Pro League, and they just they need to turn it around. Uh, you see a few of them posting kind of around on Twitter and in the forums, and uh, they're, they're trying to get back on the same page and trying to to get back and bring a W. And like we said, they absolutely need it, especially here against Optic Gaming. If they fall short this series, they, they may be sealing their own fates for going to finals. Now, let's go ahead and take a look a little bit further in depth here at Optic Gaming. We have a little player profile here for Maniac. No surprise, anyone in the community is, is a fan favorite. Started competing in 2007, Halo 2, so he has been around for quite some time. Pretty much that OG status there. Yeah, I mean, and then this guy, he's always on the content grind. I mean, everyone on Optic is on the content grind, but Maniac, he's definitely just released some awesome content recently. Uh, I mean, just from when he started, obviously, He's, he's been putting some content out there for quite some time, but the content he's been putting out is good. It's it's solid. Like it's it goes behind behind the person, behind the character of a lot of people in the optic house, even the players on his team. Uh, so it's not just all Halo content. I mean, it's just kind of the story of of what's going on behind the scenes there. And those guys definitely have a lot of fun being on that team, always out doing exciting things, having things over brought over to the house, and uh, just a. Uh, Good atmosphere over there for Optic as well. All right, well, let's take a look at the game type overview here. Kicking things off immediately with Stasis CTF. We uh, saw what happened on Stasis CTF the other day with uh, a little guy named Snipe Down and Commonly. But we've all seen that clip. We're going to get ready to go into game number one here in just a moment. But we've got the Rig Slayer, Eden Strongholds, True CTF, and then True Slayer. So ending it potentially with game four and five, both on truth. Uh, but another note, Optic Gaming has only won a single CTF game type in the entirety of the Pro League so far. So CTF definitely being one of their, actually probably their weakest game type. Uh, could, going into this matchup, they've got two CTFs here. So they're gonna have to definitely look to 
to win and get better at CTF in the future. I mean, you got to be good at all the game types, but obviously this is one that they need to work on. I mean, and being on stasis here, kind of a curveball to get things started. Uh, we've seen, you know, even though Optic Gaming has lost the majority of their Capture the Flag games, it's not like the games weren't necessarily close. They have had some great runs and show signs of greatness but kind of like we, what we've seen with Team Liquid as well, they just somehow managed to fall short at the end, whether or not it's by one kill or a double cap by the enemy team, whatever the case may be. Doing well and great plays throughout the entire team just keep falling short. Yeah, I mean, from what we've seen from Optic Gaming recently, I just it just feels it. They're not on the same page. And you've got people kind of pushing around all over. Uh, doesn't seem like they're as coordinated and, not to say that they don't have any, there's definitely spurts of, of coordination and there's spurts of teamwork and uh, spurts of just map control, but we don't see it consistently. It's just kind of, it's on and off. It's like someone's just flipping a light switch on and off constantly throughout the game for these guys because they're just, they're not able to, to keep that consistency throughout a game or even throughout a series. And one thing that we haven't talked too in-depthly about here, but uh, Optic Gaming actually ended up vetoing Coliseum and Truth while Renegades vetoed Fathom. So you know, it was interesting to see that uh, you know Renegades would be more confident going up against Optic here on Stasis than they would, for example, on Fathom, the map that they actually vetoed there. So uh, we do have Truth coming in as Game Four, but you know, pretty interesting kind of course of events here. And like like we said before, this is a must-win situation for Renegades. If you lose to Optic Gaming this late in the season, while well, you're in a three-way tie, it's not looking pretty. Yeah, I mean, all three of those teams that are in that three-way tie are looking to get a win today. Obviously, they want to they wanna pull away, but there is one team that will not get that win. Enigma 6 and Evil Geniuses are playing each other, so who's not going to get that win here? There is not going to be a three-way tie for fourth after today, basically, no, is what exactly. we're saying. So actually, the players are ready, so let's get ready to jump into the match. Capture the flag on Stasis. It's going to be three captures to win. You've got Overshield at bottom middle and Rockets top middle. A lot of the action happens around top middle, though, because, I mean, you've got sight lines all over the place. You want to keep control of those power weapons and, excuse me, the power weapon and the power up. But let's kick things off with Maniac and see what this guy's going to do off the rip. Yeah, we were taking a look at his player profile in the beginning and uh, going for that DMR. So, you know, kind of setting down a little bit of an anchor here and pushing to make sure his team gets Rockets top center. All right, it looks like Straight Sick does get those Rockets and he does have a player with him pushing over towards upper lane, but Maniac spots Ninja back at his base, going for an early flag, uh, cap, oh, excuse me, not capture, going for an early flag grab, but he's gonna get his shield back. Ninja and him still fighting this epic 1v1 battle here, but you know what? Maniac's like, later dude, I'm just gonna go to bottom middle. There's no reason for me to fight this battle. And, uh, you know, a little bit weird, I guess, for, to kind of back down right there, but huge, perfect on Victory X, looks like, Maniac made the right play right there, just leaving Ninja. He knew he had players that were spawning up on his team and just kind of just dipsy doodled his way out of there. Picking up a few kills like that, you can see Maniac's stats in the bottom right hand of the corner of the screen. You got the KDA, damage per death, and damage per minute. So Maniac, um, you know, under one, under one right now, but if he picks it up this game, he might have some sexy stats going forward. Uh, he definitely may. Uh, but there you see Penguin. Uh, holding down his base, being very defensive. Uh, but now we've got a player over on the other side on Renegades running the flag. Now let's move over to Victory as he's running the flag. He's already got it back in. Let's jump into third person and see where all these players are at. No one able to stop him. He's taking shots, but he will go down. Getting that capture, they're up 1-0 now. And Penguin using that last rocket he had, although great positioning by Maniac, uh, taking himself out of the angle where that rocket would actually hit him, dropping down after he knew he shot it and, and picking up that kill. So taking a quick look at the stats here, you got Penguin on Renegades and then Ace on Optic, both off to a pretty strong start sitting at that four kills. And to talk about Victory's flag run there, it was a perfect time to run that flag. They had a couple down. He noticed that he had some teammates blocking spawns and they forced him at that furthest point away. So he was able to just get that flag back virtually untouched 
touched until he got back to the base. But now we've got Ace running the flag. And look at this, he's got his whole team here on the upper lane. So I love this teamwork here from Optic Gaming. Let's jump into third person and see where the other team is at. Once again, nobody in place to stop this flag here. Gets the stealth capture. A phenomenal play by the entire team there of Optic Gaming. Not only that, but two dead again. Looks like Renegade's focused on going bottom center for that overshield, while Optic Gaming was focusing focusing on grabbing that Rockets top mid. It was Victory X that grabbed the overshield. However, it was almost instantly taken out, so the, no more overshield yet here. And it definitely seems like the pro players, they are favoring that upper lane side to run that flag that way. I mean, Optic Gaming just had, they overloaded it. All four players there made sure that nobody on the other team could spawn there, and then Ace just had a breezeway all the way back. Looks like Ace getting into a pretty close 1v1 battle here with commonly. He's going to get some help from Hayek yeah. there. Saved his life right there. That could have been bad news for him. But now let's move over to APG. Let's see what this guy's up to. Trying to defend his flag. He's got straight sick help, giving some shots behind that other player. Taking down Penguin. APG with the double kill. He's going to get the flag return as well. But now you've got all kinds of players around top middle. APG just getting these players weak. He's going to pick up one kill. Going for the double. Not going to be able to finish that. But Maniac's right there to clean up the kill. That's going to be three down for Renegades. And that was kind of an interesting challenge. Uh, he went for the melee, but it really did not look like he was in range. So commonly, if anything, uh, doing great work they're actually just picking up a trade well look at this ace is not running the flag to upper lane gets the shotgun on ninja he's running it towards the lower lane we were talking about how upper lane is definitely favored a bit more but this time going the, the way that people don't normally go and he's got the shotgun to make it a lot easier for him that's going to be one down for renegades they still are moving the flag i love this from optic gaming they're slain they stopped the flag and they're just making sure that they can get it back into the base safely let's jump into third person there you see they are going to be able to go for that that second ready. cap right there. Uh, the flag is there, and uh, we are tied up one to one. Well, so the commonly is pushed out right now here. Everyone on Optic trying to set up and, and get some extra control. Ace with that shotgun let's, doing a lot of work. Let's see who is holding this flag over here. This is Maniac. So. Uh, if you were confused, there was no flag cap yeah. right there. <laughs> you confused yeah. me for a I second. I confused there. you a little <laughs> bit too. So there was no flag cap. Both flags were out, but we do have a return. Uh, and we are going to see Renegade's fl uh, cap or flag number two to go up two to one. So we did have a, a bit of a standoff right there. And that was a great job by Renegades. If anything, when your flag runner grabs a kill and a half or so, uh, you know, picking up a kill with a shotgun and an assist, there was just no one on Optic Gaming that went for the Rockets. Penguin was able to grab Rockets and, and focus and use that to get a return. So uh, Optic Gaming really needing to focus on these power weapons and make sure they're in the right position at the right time. Gets a kill on Maniac. He's going to stay alive. Try and take down Ace here as Ace has got the Hydra. Penguin playing very aggressive. I love how Penguin's always just this aggressive player. He's always just kind of in your face, make, not giving you any moment to, to react. But straight sick, great team help right there on Ace to just pick up that kill. I mean, Penguin didn't even know he was there. Just a few shots across the map. That's great teamwork from the guys on Optic Gaming. Yeah, and Ace is still over there at the Hydra, working on uh, some battles, pushes away Ninja, and then just grabs a double, because we can actually hop on board with Ace. He's doing some work over here on that, the lower end side, or the Hydra side of this map, collapsing in. Great kill again. Still has plenty of Hydra ammo left. That flag's being pulled, but not in great position for anyone to run this. Uh, Optic does have numbers. Uh, he does miss those Hydra shots, and APG will go down as well. We've got Commonly looking to get that flag grab, but Victory is here as well. Victory will go down. This flag is still here. You've got Commonly now going for this flag. Let's jump into third person and see where all the players are at. You've got Optic throwing some grenades and not going to be able to get it in time, and Renegades will cap flag number three to take game number one in the series, three to one. And I honestly kind of thought that Renegades did a a whole lot better of a job running those flags. I mean, the killer slays pretty even here, but Renegade just kind of convincingly, convincingly running it. Uh, Optic Gaming could have had two flag caps more easily if they just focused a little bit better on, on the objective and the power up. It's and uh, actually, Optic creatures. Gaming did outslay Renegades here. So Renegades won three to one, but Optic Gaming, they outslayed the guys over on Renegades. So very impressive play from the guys on RNG. Yeah, that was something we saw a lot out of Envy, you know, actually being outslayed, but convincingly win a game. And 
like when you try to go back and look, it's like, hey, they were dead longer than we were dead this game. How did we lose? And it's going to come down to positioning, and they did not get the kills at the right time. So it's either someone is going out of position to to focus on kills that they shouldn't be, or the like rockets and, and things, power weapons changing the outcome of the game. Looks like the majority of overshields did go in favor of Renegades as well. So, you know, when one player is running the flag, you saw uh, several flags being run by Ace. Other, everyone else has to surround and make sure they're either getting over shield or grabbing rockets. You can't let the enemy team get into your base and, and get those flag pulls instantly. Uh, and we saw that from Renegades time and time again the, off the game, just a little bit too slow on their rotations. You know, I'd love to see their coach or have Flame Sword there working with them to make sure that they're getting into position and, and rotating like they should because they need to play better to win this. Like that was outslaying a team and losing in a 3-1 uh, with only kind of one st uh, standoff there. And then, you know, having control or having numbers and not being able to get a flag return and not grabbing the power-ups, there's just no excuse. Yeah, definitely no excuse at all. Well, you know what map we're playing next? The Rig, and we are playing Slayer on the Rig. I think we remember what Renegades did. I always like to bring up what they did on the Rig Slayer and True Slayer to Allegiance. This was back when they had Goofy. I mean, just Renegades look so powerful and so dominant, especially with Ninja going off with the sniper. He had one of the greatest sprees I think we've ever seen from Ninja in competitive play uh, out of the entirety of his competitive career. And I mean, just phenomenal play from him. Is he going to be able to, to do that here again against this squad, though? I mean, when he first did it, was that against Allegiance, the old Allegiance squad that he initially did it? So, uh, of course, it is a new Allegiance squad, but if you did it against Allegiance, you should be able to do it against, you know, the, the lesser end of the bottom half of the tier teams, the, the Optics and the Liquids. So, Ninja, you know, obviously coming out week one and putting on a performance like that, he sets the bar pretty high even for himself to try to follow up. So, I can definitely see them coming out and being really strong. But like we said, the, the Renegades that we saw in week one, whether or not it's them getting weaker or everyone else getting better, you know, I'm not exactly sure yet at this point, but we have not seen week one Renegades for quite some time. Yeah, we have not. Um, and talking about just like what they've done in Slayers, I mean, we've seen some pretty epic Slayers in the past as well. They almost beat the the record for uh, for the most beaten team at 50 to 17. That, that's oh, the what, highest margin? Yeah, the highest margin. What was it, 50 to 17 that they beat Allegiance? I think it was 50 to 18 that they 50 beat to Allegiance. 18. And I think back then on, uh, it was in Halo 2, Beaver Creek, let's throw it back, uh, a little OG here. Beaver Creek, Team Slayer, there's a match, final boss versus Carbon. It was 50 to 12. Shout out to Shockwave and Gandhi, and was it Karma Ghost? Karma and Ghost as well. Yeah. So I'm sure they remember that. That's shout not a game you quickly forget. But, but shout out to the guys over on uh, Final Boss, Ogre 1 and Ogre 2, and Walshy as well. I mean, Also shout out to the veto system, because that would have never happened <laughs> if we had a veto system back then. Final Boss Everyone would not have, have been the Final then. Boss. So true. Never would have played B for TS, ever. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to be getting into this match here in just a second. The players uh, are joining in to the game right now. But uh, actually, we do have it up. Here we go. So let's get ready to kick things off here with Slayer on the rig. We've got Camo. We've got Sniper. A lot of action to happen. Like we said, we saw what Ninja did with the sniper last time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop on board with Ninja here to kick things off because I'm hoping he can do and replicate what he did last time. Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone else has the sniper, then we'll go on board with them. But as it, as it stands, I wanna see what Ninja has in store. There you see Penguin immediately go down bottom middle to get that camo. I believe he did get that camo. So a great play from him. Penguin flies out and just ground pounds down behind camo and then just sneaks around to get it. He had Ninja shoot down the camo as well. So I, I love that beginning start from RNG because normally the red team is favored to get camo. And, you know, I just kind of saw that from Suspector yesterday in that uh, Evil Geniuses series where uh, he just jumped out, thrust it immediately down, and, and, and burnt the cam almost instantly. So it is going to be straight sick here as a sniper picking up one and then switching to his pistol, grabbing a second kill as well. So he's got two of his team's three kills here at this point. And does Penguin still have camo? Yes, he does. He's right here. But that, oh, look at this. APG looked him in the eyes. Didn't even see him right there. He picks up that kill. Going for the double. He'll be taken down. So let's move back to straight so he can see what he can do with this sniper rifle. He spots Ninja. Ninja does slide away there. Uh, so 
another great decision by straight stick. There's no need to charge. We talk about players kind of over committing and kind of overextending sometimes, and that was definitely not one of those times. You, you, you may get a player weak, but you don't have to finish that weak player every time. Just wait for the opportunity to get that right kill. Ooh, and a straight stick switching to the pistol, wanting to grab a kill here, but almost gets completely melted. Now he's getting sandwiched. I, I believe they know he's there, oh. but it doesn't matter. Please do it. I'm waiting for We're it. We're just both just, silent. Just, we'll give him a moment Please of silence. Straight stick, can you do it? And, okay, that player was weak. He did not hit the headshot. Uh, but nonetheless, 11 to 3, and majority of power weapons still in the hands of Optic. Uh, so straight stick with the sniper, Ace with the plasma caster. He just shot his last bullet there. And Ninja, or no, excuse me, scatter shot now also in the hands of Maniac. Well, we're seeing Optic oh, and, just... Oh my gosh, you, this wasn't on stream. I didn't think it was that important, but Maniac just got out would by Victory X really badly. Well, maybe we can pull that up on the replay as Straight Sick hits another headshot on Ninja, going up 14 to 6 now. Straight Sick getting some shots here on Victory X, and now Optic, they're kind of rotating around the map now, now that they're losing control. Oh, and then if you see the kill feed right there, that means Penguin jumped off the map, and he is down. You know, we're seeing a lot of players jump off the map recently, uh, but Optic Gaming just doing a great job at keeping RNG back at bay, and now they've just completely rotated around the map. Although Straight Sick did die, he was out of Sniper, so it didn't really matter that he died right there. And uh, you have Optic Gaming just completely move around to the other side of the map. And this is a great job by them, because not only when Maniac died, he gave up uh, a BR and a scatter shot in a situation where he 100% should have won, and uh, Optic Gaming still able to kind of keep control it and not what give up that positioning. What a play by Ace. Look at that. He kind of peeked back in, peeked back out. you got to give props to Ace right there on that move. He saw Victory X throw the grenade, and so he thrust it out to make sure he could evade that grenade. And, uh, I mean, big props to Ace right there on making that play. 21 to 10 now. Look at that Optic Gaming skin. If you see that on Ace's pistol right there as he reloads, uh, those are available. If you want to purchase those in the rec store, you can check those out right now if you've got your Xbox up. But Optic Gaming, I mean, it feels like we're just seeing a completely different Optic Gaming right now. I mean, and a completely different Renegades because Renegades, what they've done on the past on this game type, uh, they've just completely dominated. But now it seems like they're having trouble making pushes. They're not able to, to make the right pushes. They're not getting control of any power weapon. They're letting Straight Sick have the sniper. Another double kill for Straight Sick looking for the triple. But look at this. Victory X spawning all the way out in Carbine. You got Penguin spawning all the way out in Carbine. Straight Sick is just hanging back, and he's got his three teammates just literally creating a wall, forcing these players uh, back over into that corner. But now, let's see what they're going to do here. This is going to be interesting to see what they do. Look at this. Complete rotation from, from the guys on Optic Gaming. They just moved from inside, and now you've got Straight Sick all the way on the outside, and Optic Gaming, the other three guys are still holding that 50-yard line. Just letting Straight Sick just sit back and snipe and do whatever he wants to do. It finally looks like Optic Gaming knows what they're doing, and that is good <laughs> to see as well, because previously, people are just out on their own, and you're out on your own, and not only out on your own, but losing individual fights in those situations, you're gonna just get dominated. But today, we're seeing Optic Gaming a 32 to 15 lead already here on this map. Of course, they've had the majority of the power weapon controlled, and they're putting it to good use. Something like, you know, in that uh, the Liquid series yesterday, you know, having- Oh! Oh, my, oh <laughs> no! Oh, man, almost with the double kill. I was gonna say, it's gonna be interesting to see what Straight Sick does to get out of this situation right here. <laughs> you he just hit all the, you just hit a bunch of no scopes and just run away. Like it's, it's just as easy as that strong side. Just whip the sniper, but Ace picks up a double kill. Let's move over to him. And 36 to 16 right now. Not looking good for Renegades. Looking very grim for them to, to be able to turn this game around. Ace with the scatter shot. Optic Gaming just feeling like they're kind of just running around now because it's like kind of to the point where it's charged because we can't lose. Obviously, you don't want to give up too many kills, but they're pretty far ahead. Almost 20 kills ahead of Renegades right and now. And taking a look at some of the stats here, we got uh, Straight Sick at 12 and 3, Ace at 11 and 7. So those two lean the pack. And, you know, Straight Sick being the anchor here so far this game with Ace running around just picking up a few kills here and there, uh, it's really working out for their team. You've got Renegades trying to hold the inside of the map right now, but. Optic Gaming, they kind of, they're controlling the flow of this, this map right now. They don't need to push. They can sit back and wait, but they are just being very aggressive. Look at this Optic Gaming. Like you said, 
it's like they know what they're doing right now. They're Everything's coming together. They're on the same page. They're playing aggressive when they need to, playing passive when they need to. We've got Plasma Caster coming up here in just a second and Sniper Rifle. So we'll see if Optic Gaming is going to be able to get this Sniper Rifle as well, I believe. APG does have that. He will go down, though, but Ace is right there to pick it up. And of course, we've seen how deadly he can be with that weapon. Both, uh, you know, essentially everyone on this team. They are such, and he hits that first headshot. No, no time wasted. And that's a 20 kill lead at this point. And wow, that was another haircut there we just saw on Ninja. He's just going down with the sniper right now. 47 to 26. Are we going to see a stake right now? Pop open the grill, Elamite, because I feel a stake coming on right now. Yes, I completely agree. Starting to get a, a little hungry here, so I could use that at this time as well. Ace is going to hang out here over in the sniper hall, back here with Maniac. You got the guys on Optic Game. I mean, when you're up 47 to 27, I mean, it's pretty much safe to say this game is over. Maniac is picking up a sniper kill there as well. Ace going for a long range or ground pound. He actually. He, APG got the ground pound. And just at a quick glance, I thought Ace might have got a kill right there with that ground pound. But look at this. Optic Gaming with the steak. How do you like your steak, you know, Mike? Medium rare always. No other way to go. All right. So there you have it. Medium rare. 50 to 28. Optic Gaming straight sick with 14 kills and only five deaths. And Maniac, 12 kills and only four deaths. Now, Maniac picked up the Plasma Cast towards the end of that game. He was initially six and three last time I looked. So he ended the game, uh, you know, with 12 and four, picking up six kills for only one additional death for the rest of that game. Look at this, APG and Penguin lock eyes. They just look look each other in the eyes and APG didn't even see him. So it's so straight sick, oh man. Dirty, just... he was in a lot of snipes this game. You completely, one player can completely change that kind of a game, either you know as a sub or if you're just hitting everything when you pull the trigger. Yeah, if you're hitting no scopes like that consistently in a game, Ooh. what it does, yeah. That, wow, first two shots. That was Ace just going huge, and then Street Sick another double kill. Just so many no scopes, and then almost hitting another no scope here to oh, that second one. That was really close. Looked like a headshot, maybe. Oh, no, 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 dude. Optic had every sniper. Optic had every single sniper, and that just shows how important power weapon control is. If, if you're not controlling any of that, and you're not getting camo, you're not getting anything, it's just it's not going to be a good outcome for you. And what a reversal here from game one. You know, maybe kind of getting a, working a few kinks out in that first Aces flag game. They weren't, you know, they're rotating together, but they just weren't in the right position. Well, when you have the sniper rifle on rig, you can be whatever position you're in can almost be the right position as long as your teammates are working around you there. So uh, just focusing on that, you know, we saw Renegades with the primary camo control that game. Of course, Penguin had it a couple different times, but, you know, when camo generally not as effective as the sniper rifle can be. Uh, you know, camo might trade and kill sniper rifle, as you can tell, pick up a couple of no scopes, headshots here and there, and just completely change the course of the game. Yeah, when we're looking at Eden Strongholds, I mean, Strongholds, the comebacks we see now, it's just, you can never count either team out. Whether it's 99 to 20 or 98 to 38 or whatever the score may be. I think at this point, like it's never happened to me online where I was at up 99 to or 98 to, you know, with a Or you're just not telling lead. us and it happened to. I might have blocked it out of my memory. <laughs> like I, I'm not going to say that's completely out of the question, but that is, you know, some people were tweeting at us last night, like, oh, hey, I just had a game where we're losing 90, you know, 95 to 14, and we came back. And, you know, to be on the, the team that's winning or a team with 95 points and lose that game, that has got to be a terrible feeling. Yeah, mentally, it just, it crushes you. You're just thinking, there is no way we just lost this. How did we lose this? All we needed was just a, a couple or a few points. There's just... <laughs> What did we do wrong? For the last two minutes of this game, we literally did everything wrong. <laughs> yeah. We didn't make one play right. Oh, man. So, I mean, we're just seeing a lot of great uh, great games, too, uh, this these past couple of weeks. I mean, down to the wire on a lot of these. And I think it's just it's cool to see just these teams really battle and duke it out. And all these teams are just getting better and better at these game types. And actually, it sounds like we're ready to get into the next game. So we're not going to talk anymore. We're going to get into strongholds on eating. It's going to be 100 points to win. You want to be at least holding two strongholds or 
if you hold three, you get points. If you're only holding one, you do not get any points, but there's a lot of goodies here on this map. As you see, you've got camo, you've got rockets, and you've got overshield. We'll jump on board with Ninja off the rip right here as he makes his way over towards the tower to pick up this camo. Spots Maniac here, gets into a 1v1 with Maniac, tries to get that nade out, but Maniac is going to be able to pick up that kill. Let's move over to him. Camo, I believe, is still up. Uh, I don't believe anybody picked that up. Let's jump into third person really quick to see if... No, actually, it is still up. And you have, I believe, that straight sick going for uh, that camo. So let's move over to him if we can. Actually, not straight sick. That's Ace. Excuse me there. But Ace does have the camo. They do have control of the catwalk, but the nest is still up for grabs. I like how Ace is now making this push over here. He's got APG to help him out. So a great push from the guys here on Optic Gaming and really taking advantage of uh, that camo as well. But it's still there. They, in fact, got the reset right there. Commonly got the reset. But look at this. It is back and forth right now. You have Maniac with the rockets. Let's move over to him. He is trying to contest this stronghold right here. And Still no points, one minute in. What was the record, Kyle? It was a minute and 17 seconds, but we're not going to break it this oh, time. We were starting to get get there, but not quite enough. Now, take a look at some of the stats to start this game. Maniac, two captures, five kills. That is a great start to this game. So really glad to see him stepping it up here for this game three. Now Maniac putting some shots here on the players in Catwalk, trying to keep them at bay. He does take down Penguin, so I like how he's just kind of hanging back. He's letting the grenades fly in here, letting those players on RNG just walk in to their death right there. And Optic Gaming with some great teamwork to, to get those guys out of there. They are able to acquire Nest and get Catwalk now back in control, getting points. Uh, but Maniac being very aware, he noticed that no players were at blue side, so there are players, he, he noticed that no one on his team was there. So he knows players on the other team are going to be there. And look at Renegades. It really looked like there were two players about to commit to Catwalk, and then they ran back towards Ben. They just decided not to go for it yet. So kind of interesting decision making there. Um, you know, they are sacrificing a lot of time here, giving up a little bit of a lead. But just like that, that's what they were waiting for. Yeah, I mean, putting yourself out on the bridge right there definitely uh, puts you at at risk. And Overshield is going to be up. Let's move over to Ace, see if he is able to get this. No, he is not. I believe Overshield was burned, and Rockets are down there, too, as you see. APG just smoothly slide on in and say, I'll take these Rockets. So now APG with Rockets. Let's see what he can do with these. And Optic Gaming still lengthening their lead right now. Some well-placed grenades from APG up there, but not able to take down Ninja. It's going to goes for a long range rocket here. He does it. Look at that. He stops Ninja right there. There's a sliver left of just needing to get that captured, and Penguin is going to be able to capture that. That might have been the best rocket I've seen so far here in, in Pro League play. That sec The first one was good, but that second one that he just pulled off, last one in the chamber or last one in the gun itself, was, was pretty incredible there. Now, however, control still going in favor of, of Renegades, but nonetheless, big, big rocket kills from APG, so glad to see... Uh, He's it up. Boy, yeah, exactly. Now APG trying to go for Blue Ben, but he's going to get shut down by Commonly and sent to the ground. And now it looks like we may be seeing Renegades go for the trip cap. You've got Commonly. Let's move over to him. He's going to be trying to get these players out of catwalk, so not going for that trip cap anymore. But now back in the favor of Renegades, trying to keep Optic at bay. Uh, I mean, we saw Optic slowly pull away, but once you get a player or two down on your team, it's so easy for that other squad to, to really just turn the tides of the match. And that's what we're seeing Renegades do. We're already all tied up 25 to 25 with RNG still scoring. I mean, Optic Gaming needs to just sit patiently for a moment and, you know, wait for all their teammates to spawn. As soon as one person drops, you know, you had APG charge the bend and die in a 1v1 situation. You, your rest of your team it can't do anything at that point. You have to wait for APG to respond. And that's what we were seeing Renegades off the beginning. They were just patiently waiting and oh, waited for Optic Gaming to make a mistake. He's getting that double kill. That is clutch from him. Rockets are coming up. Ace spots. Cam right here. That is Victory X. He goes down, so they do have Rockets, and I believe they are about to secure this trip cap right now. Are they going to be able to do so? Yes, they do. Now Ace has three Rockets left. Overshield is up, and look at that. Freely given Overshield. I like how Ace has got that time to whoever on their... Is it Optic Flame is their coach? So maybe he's there helping them get those, that overshield as well. But I mean, he freely just picked up overshield and wasn't contested at all. And when you have Rockets and OS, I mean, you are you are just a powerhouse to, to be forced, or excuse me, to be wrecked with. I mean, it's, it's a just good so, feeling. It's a very good feeling. I mean, and look at him. He's just hanging out, out in the open on catwalk. And, 
There's players over on the other team spawning by Blue Ben. I mean, you can just, you, you're able to make yourself so exposed and not really have to worry about being taken down. And look at this, Camo's up too, and they're getting everything. They really are. Not only that, but Ace had to drop down here just to go pick up BR ammo. He has run it out of it. If this rocket picks up a kill, that'll be greatly of, of importance here. And oh, okay, so he gets a double. Maybe gonna focus on this triple. Oh, what? The positioning. Staying alive right there was huge. He was picked down by Commonly from, I was gonna say, where's Commonly? Yeah. He's at Tower sneaking around. Uh, but Optic Gaming up 52 to 39 now. I like how Optic Gaming's playing aggr more aggressive than they, they normally have been. Sometimes they're just kind of scattered and they play a bit more passive where you have one or two players only playing aggressive on that team. But it seems like the whole squad is, they're on that same page right now and they're moving together and uh, they're moving to those same points. Ace does get caught out in the open right there and Renegade's taking advantage of that. There's gonna be two down for Optic Gaming now. And just a moment ago, Great play by Commonly. He had a 2v1 situation, basically, and killed Maniac. Maniac com overcommitted a little bit. Y you need to be able to back up, hide, stay alive, like you saw from Ace and Nest, although he got picked up from behind, but he was able to be a kill, be a distraction for that much longer. You need to play to your advantages, and the advantage there was numbers. You cannot, you do not want to go down in that scenario. I really like how Penguin was just holding outside with the light rifle, making it so hard for those players to, to capture that blue bend, but he did run out of ammo. And now Overshield's coming up. I don't believe he knows OS is coming up. He's going to use all four of those rockets, though. And you know who does know, us, know that OS is coming up? That is Straight Sick. And he's going to be able to pick up Overshield. He's going to take down a player, get that double kill on Victory X. And Optic Gaming is just, they are getting control of all the power ups. That was three dead just a moment ago. And they're about to pick up a triple cap. So this is their time to pull away. Both teams essentially tied up, but no, it's not reset. paying attention. Big reset there from Victory X. That's three down, all four down for Optic Gaming right now. And the Victory X, that was the player that Straight Sick literally just killed as he jumped up to take Nest. And Victory X coming off the respawn, running, sprinting to the hill as quickly as possible and literally prevents that triple cap from happening. And that's completely game changing. Well, that's two down for Renegades. And we always talk about when it's that 4v4 matchup, you don't want to be that first player down. We saw Victory go down, and that allows Optic Gaming to make a push uh, a bit easier. It's easier for them to push up because there's a, a player down. You're up a man, so why not push? That's going to be two down for Renegades again, though. And now Optic going for this triple cap. So what Optic Gaming doing, is doing right now, they're pushing over towards that red side to kind of clean out the house over here, to clean, to clean these guys out from being here. And then they're going to capture Nest and then hopefully force them to spawn over at blue, but a big reset from the guys on Renegades right there, and Straight Sick just trying to stay alive, and then at the same time, they captured Catwalk, so Renegades doing a great job at really turning a bad situation into a good one. You're completely correct there. That was the second time we essentially should have seen, should have seen a triple cap out of Octa Gaming, but they launcher. failed to capitalize on it, whether or not it's, you know, gr grenades across the map or a player coming off respawn and focusing there, but regardless, still not being able to capitalize on these situations. And, you know, there's a whole lot on the line for Renegades, so they need to be thanking their lucky stars right now that they're catching uh, these players off guard. Well, now Renegades has finally taken the lead, 76, now 77 to 73. If you saw all those players on your screen, you've got Optic trying to hold down the catwalk and get this nest, but they do they do turn the tides over here on Blue Ben, and they are able to capture that, so this is back and forth right now. I mean, neither team right now is able to, to hold uh, a portion of the map and just keep the other team at bay. It's just they get a few players down, and they're able to, to capitalize on that and push up. Now Optic Gaming has two down, and now we're seeing it back in the favor of Renegades. So it just seems like both teams are going back and forth and not able to not, yeah, not able to hold uh, a stronghold for too long. And wow, great job by Optic Gaming. That's two dead for Renegades. Uh, previously, everyone had died, or several members of Optic had gone down for OS to contest it there. Did end up getting burnt, but we're coming down to the final seconds of the game. We might not even see another overshield this game. You do have, let's see, go on a battle in tower. If we can go on board with Ninja here, he does, did just grab the fresh camo and now just picked up a double kill. So great play by him. Uh, this is exactly what Renegades needs to close this one out, take this lead. And this was Optic's game to win. Absolutely. They had so many different advantages this game. They just literally let them slip by their fingers. Well, it's not over yet. Optic's still trying to get control of one more stronghold. But Renegades, I like how they played this out here. You had Renegades at tower kind of blocking this route, but then you had two guys over at Blue Bent. 
and they were trying to hold Blue Ben, but look at this. On your screen, you can see you have Optic Gaming capturing that Blue Ben right now, but they do, in fact, get the reset on Renegades. So that's going to be it for game number two. Renegades takes this, and they are up 2-0 in the series now. 2-1 uh, to one in this this series oh, Sorry, 2-1. to one. You are right there. Yeah, but take a look at some of these stats here. Uh, Renegades. Big work out of Victory X. Everyone else uh, pretty evenly across the board. Six captures out of Penguins, so very objective oriented. Ace, on the other hand, really the only one putting up any real numbers here for Optic. Uh, 22 kills. Uh, but uh, APG, not very many captures, not very many kills, nor secures. Uh, and they picked up essentially half of his kills here with these rockets right here now in the very beginning of the game. Yeah, I mean. With Renegades at the end right there, I like how they just, they kept the players over by Blue Ben to try to keep the guys on Optic at Blue Base, making that push towards Blue Ben that bay. And it looked like Optic was gonna be able to get the capture there in the last few seconds before Renegades was able to, to close out the game. But Renegades was able to, to take them out and get that reset. So it was very clutch play by the guys on Renegades over on Blue Ben. And then at the same time, clutch play by Ninja, just blocking that route from Catwalk, making sure no player can get over to the nest, and they're not going to have any uh, players to worry about sneaking around behind them. I mean, that camo really won them the game at the end there, and Ninja's ability to stay alive and use that effectively. Um, but there were a couple different opportunities, like I said, during the game there, that Opti Gaming even should have had a triple cap and should have been able to hold on to the triple cap. Yeah, you know, they had it, so many power. Uh, they had everything. camo, overshield, and rockets. Everything so many times. Like, I don't exactly understand what is happening or how they're able to, to lose that game. Like, if they're playing CLG right now and, and they would not get the opportunities that they have, the, like, that game would be like 100 to 8, you know, or, or 100 to 0 even. You know, the amount of mistakes that that uh, Renegades was making and creating opportunities for Optic Gaming to win that, to win it. Like, if you don't capitalize on every single one of those, there is no chance you can compete in the Pro League. Not at all, but now it's not looking good for Optic Gaming because we're going into another capture the flag. And Optic Gaming, like we said earlier, they've only won one CTF out of the 11 that they've played in Pro League. Uh, so the odds are definitely not in their favor right now, Elamite. I can't agree with you any more, possibly more than, than what you just said there. This, uh, and True Slayer, game five. So even if they're able to win game four, don't forget what well, Renegades did game five, uh, or that Allegiance. True Slayer to Allegiance as well. But I don't know. I mean, 18. look what Optic Gaming did to them on, on the Rig Slayer. So it's kind of hard to say that, that we're going to see that same Renegades as well in game five. But we're here in game four, though. Capture the flag on Truth. This is a symmetrical map. Three captures to win. You've got Camo at bottom pink. You've got Fuel Rod top mid -o. So you can expect a lot of players to be fighting for that Fuel Rod at top mid. All right. Who are you looking to get th kick things off with here, Sean? Let's go with Victory this time. He's always pushing towards pink. He's going straight up to pink three. And he has Ninja down at pink one going for that camo. And Ninja will be taken down. So let's see if that camo did get burned. It looks like it did, in fact, get burned. That's going to be three down for Renegades off that initial push right there. So pretty good job off the gaming, clearly winning the, the opening strat. But last guy live for Renegades commonly was able to grab the fuel rod and then a kill as well. So, uh, you know, maybe not being able to focus quite as well on the last guy live. And, Somehow we just had three members dead for Renegades and, and all of Optic is below their base. Yeah, what what happened right there? You win the beginning strat. Normally, you, you want to be aggressive and just get into the other team's base, but RNG somehow got into their base. But now Optic is clearing them out, and now we're seeing Optic make a push. Let's move over to Ace as he's got the fuel rod here looking to take down Ninja. Yes, he does take him down with a Magnum. APG picks up a kill on Penguin as well. So that's two down for Renegades. Looking to make that three here on Commonly. Straight sick back in the base is uh, looking to take down Commonly, but Maniac will finish him. And now Optic Gaming slowly making their way across the map, making their way across this 50-yard line, pushing into the base. You see three players on Renegades level to the base, and Ace just coming in straight in through the front door. Just He's not knocking on your door. He's just coming straight into this door. Two down for Renegades right now, but Ace will be taken down. While that's happening, look at this. Straight Sick and APG are running the flag. All right, what we can say is, well, and Straight Sick, great sword lunch. Maniac 
actually did just win a 1v1 battle against Ninja as well. So glad to see him set that up. And wow, the second melee doesn't kill straight because the sword is too powerful. And that is going to help secure putting it in the oh, first no cap. No way. APG had juggled the flag and it got stuck on the roof of, of their base. And he kind of got, he juggled it and missed it. And they do, in fact, get the return on Renegade. So that juggle definitely cost them the cap. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to say about that strong side. You can't be giving away flag caps to a top team, especially a team contending for top four position. That was a crucial mistake from And APG. normally, you don't take the flag in through there, right? I mean, if you, you see a lot of players jump up into the sneaky, so that was really weird to see him going straight through the side of the base. It's really weird to find Look for him to find a way to get the flag Optic returned. Gaming. It is, you're absolutely correct there. Yeah, I would have liked to see him just go up through the sneaky. It's the most basic thing to do. Everybody does it, but I mean, that's that's what it is. Just I take mean, the easy route. Don't make it harder on yourself. Do, do the route that everyone does because it's the most effective and most uh, consistent way to make sure you cap a flag. Do that. Whatever whatever play has the highest probability of working, do that consistently, and then your best chance of winning games will happen. Victory picks up a perfect kill across the map right here. That's going to be two down for Optic Gaming. Now, Victory, he's played Halo 2. He's played Halo 3. So he's played every rendition of, of midship, and he knows how important pink 2 control is. And you saw him just really holding down that pink 2 control. You're going to be looking at all players, obviously, throughout the entire match, trying to keep control of this pink side uh, as you've got kind of the main sight lines across the map. And this is the prime spot to run the flag and keep that other team spawning over in the opposite bubble. But wow, straight sick with a flying fuel rod there all the way across the map. He's going to take down Ninja as well. And that's a double kill. That's three down for Renegades. Perfect opportunity to run the flag. They're spawning in bubble and they're spawning at car side. May spawn under the base as well. And yes, there is a player that spawns under the base because that spawn was open. But straight sick is right here to stop this player from taking down his flag runner right now. So they've already got that flag back in the base. I believe that is APG again with the flag, but uh, APG looking uh, to just stay alive right here. The flag is out, so he's just got to keep this here. Do not die with it. Do not overextend. Just wow, look at this. Nades coming in from all over, commonly right here, looking to get this return as well. And yeah, I'm su pretty surprised that they haven't been able to, to you know, get that in further. It looks like Renegade's doing a pretty good job of just holding them off with only one player being commonly there. He is going to ultimately be taken out now. Now, Optic Gaming is actually heavily outslaying Renegades right now. And, uh, you know, of course, it should be a 1-0 to zero game, but that crucial mistake from APG. But right now, taking a look at the stats, straight to 15 kills on the Renegades and Ninjas sitting at only three kills so far this game. Let's check out through the eyes of Commonly right now and see what he's doing with this flag over here. Just, I like how he's just kind of rotating back and forth and uh, he got shot. So when you get shot in Halo 5 and you're holding the flag, a little marker will pop up above your head. So that is why you saw Commonly drop it and then quickly pick it right back up. So the players on the other team aren't going to be able to, to know exactly where he's at. But APG, just a great play from APG to sneak behind these players and get that fuel rod in behind them. That's two down for Renegades. APG looking to take down Ninja right now, but he will fall. Ace comes with help, but there's nothing he can do now. So APG is dead. Ace can't push on these two players. So Ace is just trying to stay alive. And really a great push from Renegades to really turn that entire situation around, even though they had a player behind them. Yeah, I mean, commonly just jumping out in front of the base, picking up Ace, finishing off straight stick. Now he's ultimately going to be taken out, so that's two members down for each team. Uh, Camo is going to be about 45 to 50 seconds as well. And right now we've got APG with uh, the noob combo. Yeah, this is honestly, on this map, you got to consider this as like a mini power weapon almost because you're just able to drop people so quickly with this weapon. And look at this, two down for Optic Gaming. Is APG going to be able to hop in here and get a double kill? He's going to oh, miss no. that crucial shot right there. And look at this, the, the wow. body disgrace from yeah. Hammy right there. I mean, and Hammy knows that he missed that plasma pistol, and he's letting him know that he, in fact, did. And, you know, you bring, you bring up the point that this is kind of like a power weapon. Well, with the new layout of the map, considering the BR, P2, and the carbine top car, uh, it absolutely is a power weapon because you have to be pushing out even more. And the fact that there's so much more pistol action uh, makes this weapon just that much more effective. Well, if Kamali would have got away with that, that could have been uh, a clutch 
clutch thing to have or a clutch thing to have to get that flag return, but he will be taken down. That's two down for Renegades. Commonly off the spawn, just looking to protect his flag guy, but it doesn't need to. Ninja with a huge flag kill. Commonly will fall to Ace and Optic Gaming trying and attempting to make a push into Renegade's base, but unable to do so. And let's go on board with Penguin here. He's the player now in top middle control, just grabbed the Fuel Rod, picks up a kill there on Maniac, as you can see in the kill feed. Uh, but having that Fuel Rod, like this is great opportunity and a perfect splinter nade. We got three players from Optic. Renegades now, look at this. This is gonna be hopefully a great push from them. And actually, no, Ninja getting take th taken down by Straight Sick. Looks like that's gonna hopefully stop that flag, uh, this push here from uh, the guys on Renegades to get this flag return. But Penguin's still alive, and you do not want a guy in your base with the Fuel Rod. So a really great play by Penguin to get into the base of Optic Gaming, especially under the base, because now Optic has to just worry about this player. Look at this great push from Renegades. They are gonna be able to get this return. Let's see if they can get that capture on the other side of the map, and they do. They go up 1-0. Penguin, he's, he's just ready to go. He wants to get that double cap. He absolutely led that flag return. He picked up the Fuhrer Rod, went on a killing spree, setting up that return as well. So not only that, but let's keep in mind that, if anything, this should be a 1-1 game, or if anything, it should be Optic Gaming taking a 2-1 lead. Look at this, and straight again. sick. Why not? I hate to call them out. I hate to call these players out, but why not take it up to the sneaky? Running in right through that open spot doesn't seem like the safe route to go, and you're going to be taken down. And look at that, RNG, they get that flag cap. I mean, I'm sorry, they get that flag return. And you saw three players of Optic Gaming essentially all next to each other. Pink side, you need to be spreading out further. The, the explosion radius and damage radius of grenades and things are just too powerful. Uh, so much damage output between all the weapons and guns. You, you need to have different angles to be taken. Now, so would course, you have, if that was you, would you have gone up into the sneaky? I, in that case, I probably would have sat pink side for a moment shooting, but then dropped below the base. Yeah. You know, just stay alive as long as possible. Wait, wait for your teammates, but... Um, just, just kind of sloppy play. I think they're just kind of forcing it, I guess, right now. It's just getting a little frantic since they're down. Well, I know, like, you know, even after that first flag return, uh, when APG did not secure it, I guarantee everyone on Optic thought it was in 100%. And when that doesn't get captured, that will affect everyone on the team. It will affect APG not securing it and, you know, kind of blaming himself. And that affects everyone else on the team wondering, what the heck was APG doing? How do you not cap that flag? So everyone, you know, it affects everyone on the team when things like that happen. Just mentally breaking optic gaming down in a sense right you see everyone on the team is thinking i just did so much to help secure this you know what else am i supposed to be doing here well, look at this three guys on renegades pushing into optic space trying to get this second flag out right now commonly just constantly in the base getting that flag initiated out of there and that was just four down for optic gaming as well so Third person, oh, he misses oh. the flag, and that's gonna, that could potentially cost him. Let's see if Renegades can hold off these players on Optic over on car side, and look at that. They are able to, and calmly, he's gonna ground pound in, flag cap number two, taking it through the sneaky. And he takes it up sneaky, ground pounds it in, like there was no question or no other way to even run the flag, and it's, yeah, I don't even know what to say at this point. You know, there's, there's standard play, there's things that work consistently, and Optic Gaming is not doing those. Now, Optic Gaming looking to try and make a comeback here. There's still two minutes of time, so you can't count Optic Gaming out just yet, but uh, RNG just looking very dominant so far. I mean, just the, the pink control that they, they've had. I mean, you saw Commonly just virtually almost untouched all the way from pink side, even though he had that fumble at pink one. He wasn't even really touched uh, getting shot with the flag, so RNG obviously doing a better job at controlling the pink side of the map throughout this game. And, you know, we have only a minute 46 left, and Optic Gaming is going to have to pick up uh, several kills now. You see in the kill feed, Ace just picked up a couple kills as well. Taking a look at the stats, uh, Ace leading the, leading the charge, leading everyone in the game with 25 kills. Optic Gaming is actually out slaying Renegades once again in a capture the flag game, but cannot capitalize or even secure flags. Wow, they are, they're actually really outslaying them right now, so that is pretty surprising. Uh, they honestly, they should have had two caps. Look at this, three down for Optic Gaming, though, as we're talking about everything, but Optic Gaming should have had two flag caps. They, they had it back in their base, uh, so they just kind of made it harder on themselves right now. I mean, one minute left, Truth isn't a very big map, so you could potentially get two back-to-back -back flag caps, but not when Victory X is in your base picking up a double kill. Let's jump into third person and see where these players are. And actually, you're going to have Penguin running this flag, so let's move over to him. 
and he's got straight stick in the base, and he's going to go under the base because realize that uh, there's players pushing him from that car side, so there's nothing that he can do. And look at this. The teamwork from the guys on Renegades right now, taking down all those players. You've got Penguin ground pounding the flag in as they get that return to take game number four, and now they win the series three to one. And, you know, you watch the game in real time, and it looks like Opti Gaming almost should be winning. But then you look at the scores and they're not even really that close, you know, besides the exception of that Opti Gaming winning that Brig Slayer game pretty convincingly. Like this was uh, a convincing win for Renegades, but at the very same time, like Renegades can't be too happy with the fashion that just happened because every other team you play besides, you know, seventh and eighth place teams right now, are not going to let you get this, away with these this things. This is it. This is where it looked like the flag cap was going to happen. APG, look at this. It, if if it he would have run to the sneaky, he would have gotten it. Yeah, a thousand percent. And like I said before, after that, it changes the effect for everyone. I talked about how it affects everyone on Optic. Let's talk about how it affects everyone on Renegades, because they're all looking at him like, I can't believe he didn't go into Attic and ground pound that flag in. He just gave us a free flag return. Damn, I would have put Optic up 1-0. Um, and then we saw APG trying to make a push in here, but he got tag team by two players in the base and another great play by by penguin under the base and this was the second time where straight to kind of just ran into uh, a mess of of people in his base uh but renegades there you see it on your screen they're gonna win game one lose game two to optic gaming and optic looking very very strong on the rig slayer and then renegades closing out eden strongholds after being down by quite a bit to optic gaming they win 180 and then renegades winning 3-0 on Truth, capture the flag, taking the series 3-1. to So Renegades obviously very happy after this win going into next week because now the pressure is on the other two teams that they're tied with. But I guarantee you that they're worried at the same time because although the scores say otherwise for the most part, I feel like Renegades was really struggling with OpTic um, and the way OpTic was playing, the amount of opportunities they had that they gave up, you, in most teams, you just don't find that many. You don't find yourself with every power weapon, full control, three members dead, and then blowing a lead. Like, this doesn't happen to the top team. So, Renegades is still, even though they got this win and they're still contenders. They've still got work to do. they still got a lot of work to do. Definitely. Well, sounds like we have Commonly ready via Skype for an interview. Commonly, are you there? I'm here. What's awesome. Uh, congratulations on your guys' win. And, uh, obviously, uh, you guys were coming off... Uh, three losses uh, throughout yeah. the Pro League, so it's got to feel good to get that first win back under your belt, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. So I've been fasting for religious reasons for the past, like, three weeks, and it's really been taking a mental and physical toll, like, on me as a player. So I'm glad that this was my last match where I would have to be fasting, so I'm looking forward to our next few matches. Wow, yeah, I had no idea that was going on, actually, and that's really, uh, you know, props to you as well, and congratulations yeah. that it's almost over. Uh, now, with those games... You know, you got you guys won game one, even though I believe you were out slayed and then got, you know, essentially dominated in game two. What was going through your guys' head and how did you turn that series around? So game two, it's Rick Slayer has always been super snowball-y. The team that gets sniper, caster is bound to get a, like a big lead unless they choke. And they and it didn't end up choking, but and straight stick was he was hitting some nice shots. So <laughs> after that game, we're just like, all right, like, you know, it happens. So let's just put our minds to the next couple of games and take the series. Yeah, so I guess talking about that too, when when you're saying you've got straight stick hitting shots like that and it's really hard to fight back from being out in the carbine when you have a team just really locking down everything with sniper, whether it's inside or outside, I guess. Uh, yeah. But what is the strategy, I guess, for, for you guys on Renegades? What, what do you guys try to do when the other team has that set up is – is it just one big wave of a push, or do you try and sneak somebody behind? Or I guess walk us through kind of what that strategy is for you guys. So when they do have full control, you your first instinct should be to stop the bleeding. You know, stop just charging them, giving them free kills. Um, that's something that we did, but we did it too late, and they ended up getting a pretty big lead. But usually you want to just stop, you know, stop pushing, talk about what your team wants to do, what side of uh, what side of the map they want to push, and go from there. Now, All one right. of our top stories was the uh, the race for fourth place and how close it's coming down to the wire here. What are you guys doing to get ready for the future? And, you know, what are your thoughts as how the, the current standings are? Well, I'm, I'm sure no one expected Allegiance to be as good as they are now, um, beating EG and beating us last week. So uh, us uh, personally, we're... 
we're just practicing every day now. Um, we're not going to take any more, you know, two, three day breaks. We're just going to be consistent with our practice schedules. And since I'm going to be done fasting, it's going to be easier for me to make more in in game calls and just play better in general because of how hard it is to play when you're super hungry. Yeah, well, kudos to you for fasting. I can't imagine, uh, yeah, mentally, uh, the toll that yeah. that takes on you uh, for not eating anything. So, But congratulations on your guys' win this week to turn things around for you guys and uh, look to see a lot more from you guys here in the coming future. All right, thank you. Take care. And I see yeah. he's got still got his teddy bear there as well. Yeah, he does have the teddy bear. I wasn't sure if you were going to say something about it. You always like to call out this stuff going on <laughs> in the background. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Great play uh, from the guys on Renegades to turn things around. Yeah, like we said, this was a must win for them, and they came out and won the series. So big props to them, and congratulations once again. Now, we do have, uh, if you are wanting to compete here and participate in all this action, maybe have some of your games casted by Strongside and myself, make sure you sign up for the open circuit. And, of course, you'll see that website link here right at the bottom of the screen, esl.gg forward slash hcsna open. Yeah, and this, this will be the last week to compete right now. So you want to try and put a team together and potentially make it in to Sunday's legendary bracket and uh, then maybe even go to relegation. But you've got to fight up against the likes of Elevate and French Toast Mafia. And French Toast Mafia, actually, since Rami is not going to be competing with French Toast Mafia this weekend, uh, I've heard from Cloud and a few other people that Sounds like Ogre 2 is going to be subbing for Rami right now for French Toast Mafia. So if you see uh, anybody streaming those matches this weekend, you'll definitely want to check it out because uh, Ogre 2 is coming back for a few more games. He has retired, but he's coming back for a little bit longer. Uh, nothing wrong with that as well. And of course, we do have a lot more matches coming up here tonight. So don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back after this.